What's up guys, in this video, I wanna show you a simple technique that is so helpful and important when solving radical equations. So on a problem like this, you can see that we have a y on both sides. And that can sometimes be pretty confusing for students, especially when we're solving our radical equations. Because the process that we have to go through sometimes can take a little bit of extra algebra. But it's really important to understand that I cannot like isolate or I cannot get the y plus two um, subtracted from over here because these terms are all under the square root. So the main important thing I need to do is get rid of the square root. And just like I've talked about in previous videos, the main important thing you wanna do first is isolate your square root. And you can see in this example, my square root is actually isolated. It's on the right-hand side, but that's okay. It's isolated. So I don't need to do any like mathematical gymnastics to isolate it, any inverse operations. We're good here, right? Now, the thing that you can kind of see is like a lot of students like, all right, so how do we get rid of the square root? Well, remember, you have a square root, this big expression, but again, it doesn't matter. This is just everything that's under the radical. We got to get rid of the square root. To get rid of the square root, we have to use the inverse operation. The inverse operation of the square root is squaring. So therefore, I'm going to go ahead and square both sides. Okay, so now you can see that I have the y plus 2 quantity squared equals the square root of y plus y squared plus five, y plus four, quantity squared. So just real quick, make sure you um, square the y plus two squared. Don't make the mistake of squaring the y and the two. y plus two squared is just y plus two times y plus two. So we gotta make sure we are applying distributive property or FOIL or whatever you wanna do to get the final answer. Okay, so it should be something you know in your head um, or should be able to do at this point. But again, if you forget, guys, don't worry. Get a side sheet of paper and just work it out. I'd much rather you spend the two second, like the 15 seconds to do this than, than making the mistake of putting a y squared plus four because then you're gonna get the whole problem wrong. We don't want that to happen. So, you know, take a little extra time. Like I make mistakes all the time and then most of it is because I'm trying to do things too fast in my head. So slow down, put it on a separate sheet of paper or a separate side of a light board and you're good to go. All right, so now here on the left-hand side, we're gonna have a y squared plus four, y plus four. And on the right-hand side, remember the square root and the squaring, those undid each other. So therefore I'm just gonna be left with the y squared plus five y plus four. Okay, so now we have a quadratic equation or a quadratic expression equal to another quadratic expression. And I, I think it's really important to know at this point in this stage of the game, you should know whenever you have a quadratic that you need to solve for, the first thing we need to do, just like on here, like I said, always try to isolate your square root. When we're dealing with quadratic equations, what we wanna do is, again, same kind of thing. We wanna isolate it. We wanna get them all the same side and we want it equal to zero. Because if we have it equal to zero, then we can solve either by factoring or we can solve by using the quadratic formula or completing the square, you know, whatever may be our solving technique. So the main thing I wanna do is get everything over to the same side. Which side that is, it doesn't really matter. You just want it to be equal to zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract everything over here and then put it and subtract it or everything over here and over to the right hand side. Okay, so now you can see that I went ahead and solved and I got y is equal to zero. Pretty nice, right? I didn't really have to do too much math. Besides expanding and subtract on both sides, I get y is equal to zero. Now let's just do a quick little mental check because we did square both sides just to make sure that this is not gonna be an extraneous solution, that this solution does work for my original equation. That's gonna be what was in green. So zero plus two is zero. Um, zero, that's gonna be zero plus four. Square root of four is two. So two is equal to two. Therefore, we're good to go with this solution. Y is equal to zero. Now, if you're wondering why I'm checking my answer, because in the next video, I'll show you what exactly happens when we have an extraneous solution.